another impacted third molar tooth number 17, uh, number 15 blade to perform a crestal incision, extending to the first and second molar interproximal papillae, uh, using a nine molt with the sharp end, not the beaver tail end, to reflect the soft tissue and a full thickness mucoperiosteal flap. I'm trying to visualize the mesial buckle cusp tip of tooth number 17 that's mesial angled. Um, and I'm going to identify this in hopes of having space to place a 301 straight elevator interproximately between number 17 and 18. This, uh, there's the uh, mesial buccal cusp of number 17. You can see part of the occlusal uh, where I'm reflecting back with the uh, multi elevator and my assistant suctioning. That's what we're shooting for and going to use a 301 straight elevator now to gain access into that interproximal space, trying to luxate and lift number 17 out without using a handpiece to section or remove buckle bone. So here we go. Um, this is a 301 straight elevator right on the mesial buckle cusp of number 17. I'm using a, an elevating and rotating to the distal, uh, actually to the mesial here, to lift that tooth up. The Fulcrum or leverage point is the crustal bone, not tooth number 18. I'm not leaning on 18 at all. Uh, this is very tactile for me at this point, uh, so I'm using this to lift and elevate the tooth up, trying not to use a, a burr to remove bone or to section the tooth, hopefully to improve the patient's recovery. And you see this thing is starting to gently lift up. I am going to change positions here, go on the buckle aspect of this tooth, and use the elevator to lift against the crustal bone again. And you will see this thing deliver vertically, coming through the soft tissue here pretty nicely. Uh, now that this thing has been delivered, I'm going to lift it up. Uh, and you can see it with the suction tip there that she's moving it around. Using the Russian forceps to remove the tooth, that's my preferred instrument for removing teeth. Uh, I like it because it has some grips on the uh, forcep end of things. The hemostats, they just, they're too, too slick for me. I, I drop the teeth a lot. Uh, debriding with uh, the Russian forceps in this case, not necessarily hemostats, going to irrigate with some chlorhexidine rinse. This is alcohol free. And then you'll see me placing hemostatic gauze here in just a second. Um, I will, here's the chlorhexidine rinse evacuating the extraction site. You will see me um, reposition the soft tissue. I don't typically place sutures uh, in third molar extraction sites if the tissue is going to lay passively. Uh, when I do have to reapproximate soft tissue in the pre-surgical position, I will use a foral chroma gut suture. This is hemostatic gauze, uh, placing a couple pieces in there to help uh, post-operative hemorrhage control. Uh, I will use the corner of the uh, flap there and an interrupted suture when I need one just to get the soft tissue to lay in this uh, proper position.